Press. In this video, we're going to take a look at finding the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of some exponential and um, then log function derivatives. And so remember that the derivative of e to the ax was equal to a times e to the ax. Going backwards, the integral of e to the ax, we're going backwards, so instead of multiplying it, we're going to divide by it. So we're going to get 1 over a times e to the ax, and then plus c. We're going to always have a plus c on these indefinite integrals here because the derivative of a constant is 0, so going backwards, we don't know whether or not there is a constant there. If we have something that does not have um, an e as the base, so something in the form of b to the x, then that derivative is going to be, or that antiderivative is going to be b to the x divided by the natural log of b. So those are our exponentials. Then for our logarithmic, the power rule, when we have x to the n, we get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. But if our n is equal to negative 1, that's going to give us 0 in the denominator. But remember that the derivative of the natural log function is 1 over x. So going backwards, we want the integral of 1 over x dx to be the natural log and here we're going to actually put absolute value bars on it just because our natural log function is not defined if that argument is negative, but this antiderivative is defined. So as long as x is not equal to 0, this is defined, and so we're going to include those absolute values on our natural log. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples of that. So our first one we have the integral of 2 over x minus 4 times e to the 3x plus e to the point 2 with respect to x. So this first one is in the form. We've got a 2 coefficient, so that's going to be 2 times 1 over x, and so our antiderivative is going to be 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then negative 4 e to the 3x, when we take that antiderivative, that negative 4 is just going to be a coefficient multiplied by the antiderivative of e to the 3x, which is going to be 1 over 3 e to the 3x. And then this last one, e to the point 2. There is no x in this term right here, and we're taking this derivative with respect to x. And so since there is no x, even though e to the point 2 is a coefficient, we see that, and it doesn't look like a regular number, like a 5, we can treat it like 1 because there is no x. It's a constant. e is um, kind of like a pi. It's an irrational. It's a letter that represents an irrational, never-ending, never-repeating decimal that's approximately 2.7. And so 2.7 to the point 2 it's not going to be a number that you're going to be able to write down an exact value for, but it is still just a number. And so we're going to treat it just like we would a 5. So that's going to be that number, 0.2, times x. Because we're taking this derivative with respect to x, and if we take a derivative and get a constant, that means it had to be that constant times x in our um, when we're taking the derivative. So going backwards, that's what we want. And then, again, we will always have a plus c on these antiderivatives. All right, let's clean this up just a little bit. We'll get 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 4 over 3 times e to the 3x. And I'm going to go ahead and write this x in front. We'll get x times e to the point 2 plus c. All right, another example here, we've got the integral of 1 plus 8x cubed all over 4x. Now, we don't have a quotient rule for integrals, and um, so we're going to use the same approach we used on derivatives. We're going to split this up 
and write this. We haven't taken an integral yet, so we still have our integral sign there. We're going to write this as 1 over 4x plus 8x cubed over 4x, and we can split that up because we have a common denominator, and we've got just a single term in that denominator. And so what we're doing is the opposite of adding the fractions. You get a common denominator, then you just add or subtract your numerators, keep your common denominator. We're doing the exact opposite. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write this as 1 fourth times 1 over x, because remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across, so I can break that up just taking that opposite. And then if we simplify 8x cubed divided by 4x, that one reduces to 2x squared. Again, we have not taken any antiderivative or integral yet, so we still have our integral sign on the front and our dx on the end. Now we're ready to take that integral. We're going to get 1 fourth times the integral of 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2x squared, that antiderivative is going to be 2 times x squared is going to be x cubed over 3. And then we always have a plus c on the end here. And so our last step to clean this one up is going to be just writing that coefficient instead of 2. I'm going to write 2 on the top and 3 on the bottom. I'm going to write that as 2 thirds times x cubed. Not really a whole lot of simplification going on here. You could really leave it in either of those last two forms. All right, so our last example here, we have e to the 3x. So that, remember, um, that's not a base e. That's a base 3. So the only thing that's going to be different on this one compared to that example uh, at the beginning of this video is we are going to now divide by our natural log of the base here. So the integral of 3 to the x dx is going to be 3 to the x divided by the natural log of 3. And then, of course, we have that plus c on the end there, and that is our answer. All right, I'll see you guys next time.